Werner Almöller is with me. Uh, he uh, produces for the Bavarian Radio in Nuremberg and uh, is a former student of mine from 1987 to 1994. He's come by because he's interested in some mouthpieces to fit together with his Schargel uh, Thomas Gansch model. Yes. Yes, Thomas mm -hmm. Gansch model. Very interesting. And Thomas is a fantastic trumpet player. His brother, Hans, used to be solo trumpet in the Wiener Philharmonic. I know them both. And uh, they're very, very, very good trumpet players, but in two different directions. Now, I was just talking to Werner about um, he, he wants certain things like to be able to play some of the higher notes and some jazz and whatever. And I was talking to him about a jazz trumpet. This is a trumpet made by the C.G. Kahn Company in 1940. And it's an instrument that, for example, Al Porcino played. Now, Al Porcino was the, the lead trumpet non plus ultra in New York until somebody named Maynard Ferguson showed up on the scene. And then he blew Maynard, right out of, Maynard blew him right out of, the, out of the air. But it's a question of what you're doing in a big band. Now, Maynard is an improviser and innovator. I was actually in Philadelphia in 1976 when they filmed Rocky. And of course, everybody knows the music from, from Maynard Ferguson, from Rocky, uh, I'm going to fly now. Yeah, ba 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 Anyway, it's about playing high in the trumpet. This is the very first heavy mouthpiece that I had made at the Clear Factory, Joseph Clear Factory in Diesbeck. It was in two parts. They couldn't make it like I wanted, because I wanted to have it made so that it fits in the same design. So it had to be two things. And it's like started like a, an adapter ring, and then it was soldered together. So basically, it's a fest, munch, a schwer mundstück with an adapter ring, maybe like this originally. That was the idea. So, mm -hmm. but the interesting thing about this is this, this is really a standard bore. I play about a 4.1 millimeter hole, which is a, a lot larger than a lot of people play in the first place. Uh, but my Dirk Messer is also very gross. The, the mouthpiece, the, the cup diameter, 18.5, I can stand, a, uh, I can still deal with a, a 4.1, 4.2 hole without my lips falling into the mouthpiece or not enough. You have to have some resistance, Widerstand. So once again, you know, there's li um, limits to every piece of equipment that you use. I had Bobby Shu, who was one of the best lead trumpet players on the West Coast here in my studio one time talking about things and he said if you want to hammer a nail in the wall you use a hammer you don't use a screwdriver <laughs> so for every piece of work you need the right um, utensil you need the right uh, Werkzeug. Werkzeug. so mm -hmm. and this is the interesting thing about this mouthpiece this is another story altogether look at the hole in that mm -hmm. This has a 5.4 hole, about the size that I would use in a Baroque trumpet. Very, very big bore, and it has no manchetta. So we get this a different thing. Look how that fits together. Now, the lead pipe is conical inside, but outside it's cylindrical, so that it's as if it uh, has a, a kind of a manchetta that goes all the way through, or a, a, what I call an adapter ring. So it's... So there's very little sound dissipating out of the side. It's very hard. This is hard-tempered, and it has no rim at the end. No, it's not, not what the Germans would call ungebuddelt. So the boring of this mouthpiece makes, it, makes me have to use my tongue and the air pressure in another way. But the resistance is really in the trumpet itself and not so much in the mouthpiece. You can hear what uh, an enormous sound that is, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, I played one time with the ZDF Big Band, and there's three other players playing with Bach trumpets. They had to move my, my microphone a half a meter away <laughs> from the others <laughs> because I covered them up. It was so powerful. And, I'd, and sitting with them, they didn't think I was playing that loud because I wasn't working that hard. Um, ZDF Big Band, uh, Sontag's Hit Parade, uh, <laughs> music kind of thing, you know. <laughs> anyway, so, so for once again.
Oh, man, you have to be careful that you don't get too much pressure in your head <laughs> yeah, because you create the pressure by the position of the, of, the, of the tongue. If you keep your throat open and the tongue down, you can only do so much work. But then when you start to play on the limits of the stratosphere, then you can do that. But you're interested in playing a nice high F, right? So the question is, Maybe you need a little flatter mouthpiece. Maybe you need a mouthpiece with a little bit tighter bore. Let me see what I have here that I can offer you. A lot of people play even a smaller uh, cup diameter. Some people play just a flatter cup. Some people play a, play a tighter bore. Bobby, when he was here, he was playing a Marchinkovich version that had been that was a California maker and then they had Yamaha made a copy of it and so they called it a Yamaha mouthpiece but it was really a Marchenkovich mouthpiece but what I'm interested in doing is giving you a, an opportunity with a little bit flatter mouthpiece can you try that I'm going to have to put a little tape on it there because again it, this mouth this trumpet is made for mouthpieces that have a a, a bigger uh, uh, like a, a Bach or, or whatever, the shank of the mouthpiece is thicker. And so when you put the mouthpiece in, it, it, it doesn't, doesn't have the, it doesn't, uh, you want it to go in as far as possible. I want that, but see, then it's tight. See, you can turn it. Oh, this is okay. Yeah. Klein, yeah, exactly. Flach. It's too flat and too klein. Yeah, exactly. There's too so, little bit in the Exactly. Skin. Because you want to get a good symphonic sound of the rest of the time anyway. You mm. don't want to pinch the mouth, the, the embouchure that you had before. Mm. That's why I say you need to stay with the mouthpieces that you that you use normally. I mean, even if I put this this take this trumpet and take a, a standard symphonic rotary valve RG, this is an R actually but an R or an RG mouthpiece and put it in this trumpet. You can still hear though. It's just harder work. I mean, you get the same sound. But uh, I think it's a question also of what trumpet that you're playing, you know? I mean, the Werkzeug is nicht nur das Mundstück, sondern auch das Trompete selber. Möchtest du das probieren, diese Trompete? Eine interessante Erfahrung. Ja, kann ich probieren, aber ja. es nützt mir natürlich nichts, weil no. ich kann sie ja nicht mitnehmen. Nein, ne? no, <lacht> kannst du nicht mitnehmen, aber, ja, ja. Äh, aber wir können aber Mundstücke dann, das ist äh, wie nochmal... Ja, ich muss nochmal schauen, was es jetzt war. Die, die, die mit dem Adapter-Ring drauf, das wir hatten. Was heißt denn M? Das ist mittelschwer. Also das ist leicht. Dreiviertel. Das ist leicht. Ja, hier, probier mal das, mhm. probier mal das hier drin, was das ist für eine Erfahrung für dich. Oh, wir machen die Adapterring drauf auch. Ich habe das Mundstück nicht gespielt, nur du hast diese Mundstücke gespielt. Ah, das geht nicht, das stoßt an, innen, stehst du? Mhm. Also, gut. Good. Now, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong, Werner. There's das nothing. Klar, no, there's ja. nothing wrong with how you play. Ja. It's just a question of how much you can practice. Yeah. Klar. Yeah. And how much mm -hmm. you really use your back muscles. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't see that because I'm, I'm, uh, you know, like covered up here. But I use a lot of uh, a lot of my latissimus muscles when I play the trumpet, and uh, I want to give an example of that very quickly with. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, another instrument that's very fun. This is the older brother of the trumpet that you have there. This is made in 1920. Mm -hmm. This is a 1920 con, a very pretty horn. Mm -hmm. And 
this is just a, a middle Schwerer's Mundstück, uh, but it has, uh, I'm playing still, it's just a normal cup, yeah? This was made in 1920. Mm -hmm. This is a real jazz trumpet found in a turtle market, beziehungsweise in an in Fand House in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Und denjenige, der das gefunden hat, hat es seinem Bruder gegeben, war Trompeter, er war selber Posaunist, und sein Bruder ist zu mir gekommen und hat gesagt, ich möchte Unterricht bei dir nehmen. Und ich gebe dir diese Trompete auf Dauerleihe, wenn ich dann Unterricht bekommen kann. Ich habe gesagt, ja. Mir wäre es lieber, dass du einfach mir saß, einfach vor dem Unterricht. Und er sagt, ja, das kann ich nicht leisten. Aber er hat gesagt, okay, wir machen das so. Du sagst mir, wie viel Unterricht du meinst, dass das Instrument wert ist. Und wenn das abgegolten ist, dann gehört das Instrument mir. So, ich habe ihm 20 Unterricht gegeben für diese Trompete. <lacht> der Unterricht bei mir ist 100 Euro, also 2000 Euro habe ich mhm. dafür bezahlt. Es ist Hand eingraviert. Siehst du das Schloss hier? Mhm. Schloss. Diese wunderbare Ring, so, alles Hand eingraviert, 1920, vergoldet. Und die Ventile waren undicht. So, was habe ich gemacht? Ich habe einfach gegen alle Rat und äh, an alle, was die Gemeinde vernunft ist, ich habe die Ventile vergolden lassen. Und wo die Gold nicht abgerieben worden ist, ist geblieben und hat dann die Ventile wieder dicht gemacht. Logischerweise, siehst du das? Ja. Und somit habe ich ein Instrument, das fast unbrauchbar, also nicht auf einmal vergolden, so zwei oder drei Schichten mhm. bei einem Juwelier, also <lacht> nicht, kein billiges Zeug. Ja? Und dies ist der Charakter, und, und uh, Rhapsody in Blue, das, was ich gerade geschrieben habe, ist geschrieben worden 1923. Mhm. So passt genau für die Klang und den Charakter von das Instrument. Jetzt zurück zu das, was für dich wichtig ist, Werner. Und das wäre vielleicht zu überlegen, ob wir eine... Ich habe auch Mundstücke gemacht mit einer längeren Seele, sodass das Mundstück, obwohl du wirst dieses Instrument spielen, was du brauchst, ist mehr Widerstand in, das, in dem Mundstück. Und wenn wir die Seele länger machen, zylindrisch länger halten, eine mhm. längere Seele, dann hast du mehr Widerstand direkt nach der Kessel und der, und der Hals von dem Mundstück, eine längere Seele, und dann geht es auf. Mhm. Also das, ist die, das wäre die Kombination. Und äh, ich habe eine, eine LS hier, ein, ein Mundstück mit einer längeren Seele. Wäre es dann auch äh, durchaus äh, also für die ganz normale Bach äh, interessant oder sprichst du jetzt eigentlich nur für, die, äh, für das Ganschwan? Also ich, ich für alle Instrumente, es kommt darauf an. Ich meine, ich benutze Mundstücke für, für verschiedene Sachen, je nachdem, was ich, was ich dann, wo, wofür ich den brauche. Für, für mich ist es nur wichtig, dass es funktioniert und der Klangcharakter und die Eigenschaften sind ähm, das, was ich suche. Ein, nur ein flackerer Kessel und ein, ein, ein engerer Hals in dem Mundstück ist keine Lösung. Es verursacht nur mehr Widerstand. Du bist kräftig genug, dass du ein hohes F spielen kannst, so wie ich, ohne Problem. Die Frage ist, wo, geht, wo, wo erreicht man die Tonstabilität? Mhm. Und wichtig ist auch, die, die Stabilität die, die, die kommt durch, äh, meistens durch zylindrische Rohr, aber in der richtige Bohrung. Danke. Und wir sehen uns bald wieder bei La Tromba, Music, The Man with the Horn, Richard Carson Stewart und Werner Almere.